welcome back to Todd Family Farm. So today we have a little bit of a throwback video with some footage from this past summer. Um, it's not been real exciting lately. Uh, the weather has not been super bad. If you remember last Christmas, it was like 30 below with snow on the ground, just completely miserable outside. This year, our winter has been quite a bit more mild so far, and it's still like really cold. It's not horrible. It's probably like 20 degrees in the mornings or something. So it's still cold to where we can't really like do a lot outside during the day, but there's no snow or anything and it's not been the bitter cold this year that it was last year, which has been really nice, but there's still just not a lot to record. So I haven't gotten a lot of footage lately and I'll probably try to take you guys along with us for some stuff coming up, but I do have just one or two little throwback videos from this past summer that I'm going to be putting out here soon, so I hope you guys enjoy that. This one was taken, I believe, uh, like the second week of September, somewhere around there, and this is going to be seining fish out of our pond. This was our first time ever doing this. We had done some catfishing earlier this year, and the catfish just weren't biting when we would try to catch catfish on the evening, and then we had a ton of crappie in our pond, and we just needed to get like catch a lot of fish but they weren't really hungry because they had plenty to eat and they were just happy and weren't loving to be caught on just fishing so we decided to try seining so we bought a seine it was 250 feet long i believe huge seine and we decided to try it ourselves this was our first time ever trying to sane fish out of our pond so we had no idea what to expect what we were going to get if it was going to be a complete fail if it was going to work really well we really didn't know but we bought one and got it here and then tried it out so i got some footage of that i was busy when we were doing it um i was in the water helping with the actual saning so i was not getting the footage but i did give a camera to eliza and lemuel and had some cameras around so we did get some footage of it and got it edited down and put into this video so i hope you guys enjoy it and you guys can go watch that now all right we have arrived at the pond here we are it is a beautiful morning it's kind of too cold to be out here in shorts and barefoot but we're gonna uh, the sun is out so it could be worse and it's only getting better and we're very excited to try this out so we are suffering through the cold a little bit i think it's gonna get way worse when i get in the water though <laughs> so here is our saying it is 250 feet long dad said when we were talking about it he said go big or go home so that that's what we're going by today and it might not work at all but we're gonna try it and if it doesn't work today we'll try again tomorrow so it goes from here at the beach all the way down there um yesterday we got it all stretched out and all of that it looks really good we have this yellow rope stretched all the way across the pond and dad's over there the four-wheeler is over there and we're gonna pull the seine into the water across the pond so I gotta, I gotta get busy here and help, but yeah, that is the game plan, and I will try to get some footage. See how this goes. Okay, it's recording. What? It's recording. Look at that. Oh. Remember, I think we put in one video. Look how 
four-year park. Okay. Hello again, everyone. <laughs> okay, that was kind of intense for a while there. It went well. That was the first time we've ever done that. And it went pretty well. Um, we were kind of aiming for catfish. We ended up getting two catfish, but we got a ton of crappie and bluegill, and that's a good thing because we have a lot of crappie in the pond. So it's good to get those out. We kept some bluegill, uh, kept the two catfish that we did get. And uh, we also got like five grass carp, which were huge. And we got those turned back. I don't know if we got real great footage of those because we had to get them turned back pretty quickly. Um, so they weren't too stressed out and we wanted to make sure they made it okay. So got those turned back and it was super muddy. We got cleaned up just a little bit in the pond, but we're definitely gonna have to go up and get some showers and we have a ton of fish to fillet and deal with. So yes, it went well. That was actually pretty fun and very exciting there for a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope we got some good footage. Uh, I put Lemuel and Eliza in charge of footage. So if it's not very good, you guys can go yell at them and in the comments. But if it is good, then you guys can tell them a good job. I am very offended at that. Here's the final catch. This is what we kept. Kept a bunch of crappies, some catfish, and some bluegill. And one or two bass. We turned a lot of bluegill back. So there was the first time that we had ever sained and it went really well. We did not get any catfish, which is kind of what we were going for, but we did get a lot of crappie and bluegill and then we kept quite a few of those. Um, we turned quite a few back as well, but we did keep quite a few and got those filleted up. And I'll show you guys like the final, um, the meat that we got off of those. I'll show that to you at the end of the video. So the next little clip is dad is going to be unboxing and giving a little overview of an aerator that we had gotten from Vivor. So this past summer we had a little bit of troubles with when dad will explain it a lot better than I will but we had some walleye that were dying in the pond so we had to get a solution to that and so we got an aerator from Vivor and dad is going to be unboxing it and giving a little overview and kind of explaining what happened with that. Okay, we're gonna, we'll unbox this real quick. Uh, this is a Beaver pond aeration system. I think this is a two aerator, maybe like a, I don't know. It's, it's for like up to three acre ponds, I guess. Ours is an acre and a half. The thing about, and we'll unbox this and I'll show you what you get in the box. Pretty big box, very heavy actually. Um, probably 60 pounds. And um, here's a foot. You get two, you're going to get two of these. The air hose is going to slap on here. And this is what sits on the bottom of the pond. Then you get this hose is weighted to where it will not float. 100 foot and 100 foot. And that's probably 20 pounds there. Um, manual miscellaneous fittings here. This would be a diffuser. We'll see how we like it, but it screws on right there. So that sits in the bottom of the pond. One over here. You can, uh, it comes with a timer, this one we think. And we'll do a link to it. We'll give you a link. Um, we'll tell you what we, we think of it. This would be a filter for the pump. Here's the pump. Okay. 
These are meant to pump for a long time. I have no doubt that this is going to do well. It's just a part, a big up part of it's going to be how long will it do. This one is not waterproof here. You'll have to have this one in some sort of a uh, uh, weather tight system. And then you run this out. You look out across the pond right now and you can see our windmill is going. And you can see that across the pond in the deeper part. I don't know, you may or may not be able to see it. It is uh, where that aerator that's on the windmill works. Problem we had is that the wind stopped blowing for like three weeks. It got really hot. Then it got really cool. And when it got really cool, the, uh, the algae started dying. And when the algae died, it sucked the oxygen out of the water and a bunch of our walleye died. So we had a walleye uh, death. They're the first to die in a low oxygen environment. So that's pretty unfortunate. So we're gonna try this. Now this is a 110. In situations, and we've got 100 degree temperatures coming up. In situations where it gets stagnant, we can still move water without uh, air and wind. So that's why 110 is important. Most of the time our wind, our windmill does fine, but this is not gonna be our full-time aeration system. And the other thing you need to understand is that aeration, okay, the first, the biggest thing to add oxygen to the water, and that's the, what we're trying to do here, is add oxygen to the water. What more correctly dissolved oxygen. Cold water, the colder the water, the more oxygen it can hold. The warmer the water, the less it can hold. So when the water temperature is kind of warm, it's bad. So we're trying, and the, the best way to get oxygen in water is algae, bar none. So you need, clear water is bad actually for fish growth. There's no oxygen in the water. Algae, you know, we breathe in oxygen, put out uh, CO. Plants are the opposite and they will use uh, carbon dioxide and then add oxygen even in the water. So algae is important. You need a, a algae. And actually, when you should have so much algae, the water clarity is, is that when you get down to your elbow, your fingertips should disappear, 18 inches or so of water clarity depth. So you want algae in there to put oxygen. The other thing is, is wind. Wind beats the top layer of water, beats, beats, beats wind, and just like fluffing egg whites, you beat it more and it adds water, air to it. So number one, algae. Number two, wind. And wind will move across the top, but algae is all throughout the water layer. So this does not add oxygen to the water, not of any magnitude. People think we're trying to add oxygen to the water with this, and we're not. What we're trying to do with an aeration system is to take the water that's on the bottom of the pond and, and move it up into where the algae and the wind can aerate it, can oxygenate it. We're not oxygenating. This should be called a vertical stirrer. And so when you pump water, air into this, right here, and it goes and it diffuses, it lets out millions of little bubbles. And as those bubbles are coming, it actually takes that water and a vertical stir. And it brings that bottom stagnant water up. And the big, you will have fish die if you let water stay cold on the bottom and it gets hot on the top, and at, at a certain time it'll it'll what we call turn over, and it, and if that water flips, big trouble. All your deoxygenated water dumps to the bottom, and, and and vice versa. So you want your water to stir vertically. Wind does horizontal, but there's you have to have a vertical stir, and this keeps this keeps the water mixed. This is a water mixer. A vertical mixer so that's what we have that's why we do it so there it is we ended up not having to put it in this year we'll probably be putting it in next year um, the we just didn't have a need for it we had that one really hot week and then really um, when the weather changed and all that that we had some trouble with the walleye but after that it was ended up not being a huge need for it because the wind was moving and kept the aerator on the windmill going pretty good but we will show you guys that next year when we ended up and when we end up installing that and keep you guys um, updated on how that does but just uh, unboxing it and looking at it it looks like it's going to do really well
Next footage is going to be our second attempt at seining. Um, we did it in the evening this time and yeah, got some good footage of that. We had several grass carp and did some really fun footage that I enjoyed seeing and editing again. So I hope you guys enjoy it as well. All right, everybody, it is time for round two of seining fish out of the pond. I think it was last week when we did it for the first time. It was the first time we had ever seined fish out of the pond, and it went really well. We got a bunch of crappie and a bunch of bluegill, some bass, and two catfish. But we were really hoping for more than two catfish. In fact, we mainly wanted to get that seine to get catfish, but we seined early in the morning the last time and it, that's not when the catfish are active so what we're going to do tonight is it's like 6 30 right now yeah. somewhere around there and we are going to feed the catfish they are trained to get fed in the evening they come up and eat we're going to pull the seine across once they're up to eat and then have them trapped in there and hopefully get a ton of catfish um, then we'll get them skinned up tonight and we'll see i'm not sure how it's going to go but we got a ton of crappie last time and got a ton of meat from that that which was really nice and hopefully after tonight we will have a bunch of catfish so we will see and we're gonna head down and see what we can do with this we got a beautiful rainbow down here it's actually a really pretty evening uh, we came down here earlier and got everything set up so we have the seine stretched out over there and then we have the rope stretched out across the pond um, Emma's got the four-wheeler over there ready to pull the seine across so we're gonna feed the fish hopefully have the fish up here in this area and then we are going to pull the seine across and get them caught Okay, we're finished. I am very, very muddy. My legs are so muddy. Very, very tired. Anyways, no catfish. I don't know what the deal is that we cannot ca catch catfish. We got grass carp, bunch of crappie, bunch of bluegill. No catfish at all. So we kept a bunch of crappie and bluegill. I'm gonna get those filleted up, get cleaned up because I'm still very dirty. But yeah, it was. It went well, we just didn't get any catfish. So that's kind of sad, but we got a bunch of other fish. 
that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was something super new. Like I said, we had never done any uh, seining like this before. So it was really fun. I really enjoyed it and it did really well. We got a lot of fish. Um, we got the meat processed. Here's a little overview of what the meat looks like after we had got it all filleted up and vacuum sealed and then frozen and having some fish fries this winter with that, which is really nice. We actually had some of that not too long ago and it was really, really good. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time.